Hi Matthew, welcome to the studio, the Vimax studio. Uh, first off, would you like to explain what a welterweight is? Yeah, welterweight is um, it's the weight I've boxed at for you know several years now, really. Um, um, in a simple, simple way, you know, if it's uh, it's 147 pounds or 10 stone seven, so uh, that is pretty. You know, sometimes the the weight differences vary in amateur boxing and professional, but welterweight is pretty standard, really. Ten, ten and a half stone or 147 pounds. How did you first become interested in boxing? Well, I originally started off uh, fighting, uh, kickboxing. Um, the, the local area where I lived, there was a kickboxing gym, and uh, it sounds funny now, you know, I've got a, a young boy myself. Uh, I started kickboxing at six, so I suppose fighting's always been in me, really. Um, I had a few, you know, I, I did kickboxing from about the age of about six to about nine. Um, I had about 20 contests as a, as a kickboxer. And uh, you know the, the local council were making cutbacks and, and the gym shut, um, and it was just a, the natural progression really to go into to boxing. I had a few fights, um, but I was doing other things at that time. I was I was well into my football and, and cricket and things like that. So I had a you know a few fights over the space of about two or three years, um, but on and off really. And then uh, I started again seriously uh, when I was 15 and uh, been doing it since then. Which boxing legend would you say inspired you, inspired you the most? I think there's a few really. Um, you know, my favourite boxer of all time was Sugar Ray Leonard. Um, you know, such a fantastic fighter, a great all-round fighter, and a showman out of the ring as well. You know, but I suppose fighters like you know uh, Muhammad Ali is, is a name that sticks out. And I remember when I was just starting to get back into to boxing, Prince Nazim was about, and seeing the interest he was generating in the sport and the in ring entrances and stuff like that. And also my brother Ricky, um, you know, seeing how well he was t just turning professional at the time, and uh, seeing how well his career was going. I think. Uh, as young brothers, a lot of the time follow the, the older brothers and I suppose seeing how well Ricky was doing uh, encouraged me to, to get into it as well. So, uh, you know, I've, I've been inspired by lots of different fighters really. Like I say, my brother Ricky has, has had quite a, a bearing on my career. Uh, Prince Nazim, you know, was, was big at the time, but Sugar Ray Leonard was, uh, you know, uh, a fighter, my, my favourite fighter really. So, you know, different fighters really for different reasons. How would you describe your typical training program on the run-up to a fight? That varies really, you know, it, it depends uh, how long the, the fight is, um, you know, obviously the duration of a fight, whether it's, uh, most of my fights now, you know, a 12 round contest, so uh, I usually give myself about a, a 10 week uh, training program really, I start on my diet. And the, usually the, the work increases as the, as the fight goes on, usually my, my day consists of uh, you know, I'll start off in the, in the morning with uh, a run, which varies from, you know, a long steady runs up to, you know, short explosive stuff. Um, but, you know, it's, it's very important to, uh, to save your, your best for your gym work. You know, I'm a boxer at the end of the day. Uh, my, my gym work is always my toughest. You know, it consists of like shadow boxing, skipping, um, you know, strength training, sparring, pad work. Um, all different things like that really so uh, you know my, my training gets tougher and tougher as it as it as the fight gets nearer and then obviously you need to stop at the right time and, and save your energy for uh, for, the, for the fight night so uh, you know it's a it's a you know a tough regime being a boxer you know it's a, it's a hard sport but you know a rewarding one so uh, it is hard work you know it, it gets tough sometimes but uh, that's what's great about it and that's what I love about it how important is good nutrition alongside your training? You know, good nutrition is, is vital, really. Um, you know, and uh, it's, you know, it, it's come on so much over the, the last few years, sports nutrition. And uh, I think when you fight at the, the top level, you know, opponents and people are so well matched. And sometimes it can be little, little things that make a, make a difference. And, uh, you know, good nutrition is a, is a massive part of it to, for me. You know, I take all the, the Viamax products and uh, I've been with Viamax probably three or four years now and uh, they've probably been the, the best years of, of my career, to be honest. You know, where, whether that's a, a coincidence or not, I'm not sure. I certainly don't think so. You know, they've, they've helped me a lot. And I think nutrition, you know, at, at top level in sports now can definitely make a difference.
Which is your favorite supplement that in helps increase your performance in the ring, would you say? I mean, the, 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 one, of the thing, one of the things that I, I take a lot is the, the recovery after, uh, after intense workouts, you know, pro recovery, you know, it's a great tasting drink. But also, I think it's, it's important, really, you know, after you've trained hard to, to get the right thing inside your body and, um, you know, to, to get you ready to, to go again. Um, you know, I take you know a lot of the the different supplements from the Viamax range, like I say the the recovery. Um, I take um, the meal replacement. I, you know, I'm quite a big fighter for for the welterweight division, so I take the meal replacement. And I think you know for for weight loss and stuff like that, that's also a, a supplement that really helps me. We've heard that you're fighting in Cape Town in March. How does it feel to be given another world title shot? It feels great, and uh, I feel I feel I deserve another world title shot. Really, I mean, I feel I've, I've been unlucky. Um, the, the the title I'm fighting for, the the IBO title against Chris Van Heerden, that title should have been mine years ago. I thought love more than I do for that title, and you know I'll still be banging on about that till a, till a day I die or till a day I, I win uh, I win that world title because. I won that fight clearly, you know, I threw a lot more punches, landed more punches, was the aggressor in the fight and uh, that fight ended in a draw and, and in that case, you know, the, the champion keeps the belt, so to say I was sick about that was an understatement really. Um, then I challenged Saul Alvarez for the WBC like middleweight title, um, that was a weight I'd never campaigned at, you know, I'm still a welterweight, I always was a welterweight, but sometimes in boxing and in life you get opportunities that come up and you've got to, you've got to take it. And uh, even though uh, I lost that fight, I think my stock rose in that fight, you know, everyone could see I was in there with a much bigger man. He had a massive weight difference uh, on me on that night and, you know, look what he's gone on to, to do since. I still believe I've given him the, the toughest fight of his career. And uh, with every win he has, I think it uh, makes my performance make that look a little bit better. But, you know, it's always been my ambition to become a world champion. Some, some guys get into boxing, you know, I want to be a British champion, I want to do this. It's always been my ambition to, to become a world champion. I've always believed I could do that. I've done everything else, you know, I was the undefeated European champion, I was unbeaten at that level. But the, the one thing that has eluded me and uh, is that world title. So to, to get another opportunity, um, is um, is great, and uh, we've we, you know we're failing twice. It makes me even more determined to to win. You know this could be my last chance to win a world title, um, so I've got to give it everything. You know, f having failed in in the past, you know what, what's happened. I've been unlucky in the past. It makes me even more determined to to produce the goods and, and fulfil my dream and become a world champion. You know, if uh, even though I've had a very good career and I'm pleased what I've achieved. If my career ended now, I wouldn't be happy. You know, I've always wanted to become a world champion. I've always believed that I could be that. And uh, so to get an, an, another opportunity is great, and I can't wait. We've been uh, following you on Twitter. Um, have you got anything to say to uh, Chris Van Heerden on camera? Not really, no. I think if anyone follows myself and Chris, they'll see that there's been plenty to say on Twitter. But... You know, I've ser I'm not one of these people who says things just for effect or to generate interest on the fight. You know, things that have been said on there, I'm sure he means it and, and I mean it. At the end of the day, I've got enough friends. I don't need a friend. He's my rival. And uh, in March, I'm, I'm going to want to get in that ring and, and win whichever ever way I can. So I hope he's not as fast on the night as he is on the Twitter because the minute anything's on it, he's on it. Like, But, you know, I'm a firm believer in me. He talks cheap, um, you know. I've had good banter with him on, on rivalry, rivalry on Twitter, but I've not said anything on there, and I don't think he said anything there that we don't mean. At the end of the day, I've got enough friends. I don't need a friend. He's my rival. And um, like I say, it's been good banter on Twitter. He's had a few things to say, but, you know, I will have the last laugh in March. What is your greatest achievement in your boxing career so far? I think... Uh, my greatest achievement, and you know, look, looking back on it, has, has got to be when I was become the European champion. Um, the European title, a very prestigious belt. I um, remember when I got offered the opportunity, really. Um, I was offered the fight on two weeks' notice, which uh, wasn't a lot, really. Um, you know, usually you get 10, 12 weeks, but an opportunity arose. Uh, and I was in decent shape. And it was one of them where I thought, 
I've got to go for it, you know, I've got nothing to lose. I was in there with a good fighter, Jan Yukabranco, you know, he'd had about 50 fights, he'd only lost to Miguel Cotto and Arturo Gatti. And uh, I thought, I've got nothing to lose here, what the hell, let's go for it. And uh, I probably produced the best performance in my career that night, boxed really well. Like I say, I had nothing to lose, there was no pressure on me. Everyone was saying, oh, he's only got two weeks notice, he's going to be, you know, he's going to be gassing out after a few rounds. But I just got into a good groove in the fight, you know, was winning the rounds and uh, I, was, I was enjoying myself in there. So, uh, you know, it was a great night for me. It's got pride of place and the mantelpiece in, in my house. You know, European champion, uh, uh, you know, fighters who I always look to, up to, you know, become European champion. And um, it was a great night for me and, and one I'll never forget. But, you know, the, um, the, the, the next thing up for me is a world title. You know, uh, very pleased to, and proud to be, be European champion. But it sounds greedy, but that's not enough for me. It's always been my ambition to be, to be world champion. So that was a great night for me. And hopefully the, the best nights are still to come. And the final question is, uh, what advice would you give to young athletes and those looking to improve in their sports and training? I think, you know, the only advice you can give really is mean everyone has got their, their own levels of, of ability. But I think as long as you're enjoying what you do, you've always got to enjoy what, what you're doing. You know, whether it, in life and in sport, if you're enjoying what you're doing, you'll get the best out of yourself. But I think to to just give it everything, you know, give it 100%, be dedicated, be disciplined, and uh, you know, just enjoy what you do, give it everything, and uh, you know, you've got to look back on your your career with with no regrets. As long as you look back and you think I did everything I, I could have done, um, you know. Uh, it's good to, to look back with no regrets. So just give it 100% really. Be dedicated and disciplined, which you've got to be in a tough sport like boxing. Just give it 100%, enjoy what you're doing. You know, you, you, can't, you can't ask for, for any more off anybody. Thanks a lot there, Matthew. Great to have you in the studio. Oh, no problem, thank you, Matt. Excellent.